Now today we're going to talk about uh, purchasing off the plan. Now primarily we're going to talk about uh, purchasing uh, apartments off the plan as opposed to, to house and land packages where there are some uh, slight differences there. So the main focus of today will be to talk about some of the, the dangers uh, and risks in purchasing off the plan, um, what you need to look out for uh, and how we can uh, best prepare ourselves so we can avoid or minimise those risks. So there has been a lot of um, talk in the media lately. There's a lot of media articles, particularly around uh, Sydney and Melbourne, which are the, the stronger growth markets over the recent times, um, involving um, uh, clients that have purchased off the plan uh, from the developer and uh, things haven't gone to plan as, as it were. So uh, there's a couple of uh, stories I've got here that um, we can have a look at. Now, one of the most recent ones is a uh, a development in uh, Sydney uh, going back a couple of years uh, now when it was when it was first begun. Um, what we've got here is um, uh, a report here uh, from a, a class action lawsuit of uh, 34, uh, 37 first home buyers, I should say, um, that, that bandied together to uh, challenge the developer who has basically uh, implemented the sunset clause uh, within the contracts there okay so there's been a number of um, buyers who have experienced issues with this and we'll talk about that a little bit further now so what's happened is um, the development is uh, run over time and so the the sunset clause has been invoked to nullify the contract so in this example basically what's happened is that with the sunset clause um, which is a, which is a term in the contract now the sunset clause within a contract is actually theoretically there to protect the purchaser okay so um, that clause is there to protect the buyers uh, in the event that the development uh, does not go ahead or that the strata uh, documents for example are not finalized by a particular date so normally we're looking around uh, on average, a 12 to 18 month build time, and the sunset clause, roughly speaking, you know, it might be might be in there at uh, you know 18 months or, or at 24 months. Now, what happens is if the if the build isn't completed by this date, then the purchaser is uh, in, in their rights to enact the sunset clause um, to therefore get their deposit back, because obviously um, you want to have the development. Uh, completed in a reasonable amount of time. Now, what's happening or has been happening of recent times, particularly in Sydney, is that these developments have been going uh, or getting close to uh, the sunset clause date. Um, property prices have increased substantially in many areas, particularly in Sydney, where this is being evidenced more so than in other states. And in fact, the developer is then um, enforcing the sunset clause within the within the contract and refunding the initial purchases their deposit and then reselling those apartments upon completion back into the market at what happens to be a much higher price point okay so given the amount of price growth in recent times in Sydney um, developers are now being accused of holding things up, delaying the build until time passes that sunset clause so they are able to uh, enact that clause, refund the initial purchases their deposit and then resell those apartments upon completion at a higher price. Now, there was a, a recent case, as I said, uh, with that class action suit where the court ruled that the developer was well within their rights to, to implement uh, and to enforce that sunset clause and really did not take into account the increases in price um, or, or the additional profit that could be made by the developer introducing um, or, or delaying the completion, uh, allegedly delaying the completion uh, of the apartments and then reselling those at a higher price. So that, that wasn't taken into consideration at all. It was merely the fact um, the court was ruling on um, whether or not the developer acted within their rights, within the, the contract, and they ruled that they did. 
So that's something we'll talk about a bit more um, later on. Um, another thing that uh, has been happening as well is that um, uh, has been noted in the press recently from, from one of the leading valuers is that they're seeing that valuations are actually coming in at the lower end of the original contract price. Okay, now that's obviously an issue as well because uh, if your valuation is coming in lower than the contract price that you paid, g'day CLP23, thanks for joining. Um, that's going to cause you some, some concerns at settlement, okay? So we'll, we'll get to that in a minute as well and we'll, we'll cover that. Now there's also been another instance uh, that's a wry smile on my face. There's a gentleman in Sydney as well who's purchased an off the plan apartment. Off the plan, one bedroom apartment in the Sydney CBD, again recently reported uh, in the press. Now upon completion, uh, the developer Hi, ATL Finn, thanks for joining. Uh, the developer has actually produced a studio apartment. So this uh, young gentleman who's been waiting three years for the build for an off the plan apartment that he's going to move into in the Sydney CBD has paid for as an expect and is expecting a one bedroom apartment uh, has been delivered a studio apartment, okay? Now, um, he has uh, he has actually been offered a, a refund of his deposit, but that's just to highlight that some of the things that, that can happen, and we'll touch on that a little bit more um, shortly. Um, the other thing that there was an issue with in, in that uh, development as well was that uh, the the fixtures and fittings, uh, as advertised uh, on those glossy brochures, on all those marketing brochures, um, what um, the final product was was uh, nothing like that and not up to scratch. So that's uh, something else we'll cover as well and something to, to be aware of. Of course, <clears throat> excuse me, there's um, obviously a lot of benefits to, to buying off the plan as well, particularly in a rising market. Um, there may be stamp duty savings for you there, um, additional uh, depreciation expenses that you might be able to claim uh, as an investor purchasing a brand new property as opposed to an older style property. Um, you're getting a brand new um uh, fit out, obviously, appliances and fittings and furnishings and everything that come with it. So um, there are many good reasons to be purchasing off the plan. So we just want to highlight some of the, the risks that you need to mitigate when you are looking to do that because there are some additional risks and some um, idiosyncrasies, I guess, as compared to purchasing an existing property. Okay, so uh, there's three main areas I want to talk about today. And the first one really is um, doing your due diligence on the developer. So it's all well and good uh, seeing the glossy brochures, um, getting the pamphlets from the sales agent, everything looks fantastic, but you really do want to do your due diligence on the developer. So to see what other developments that they've done, what other developments they've completed, um, really checking out their, their track record and their history. Now, uh, Google is your best friend. Google will tell you everything these days. Um, simply check out the developer, check out the builder, um, do your research on them, do it online. You will come up with all sorts of information. Um, it really is uh, an invaluable tool. There'll be information on forums, there'll be reviews. Um, if you can, go and have a look at some of their completed developments and have a look at the, the fittings. You know, if you get a chance, uh, you know, to even talk to some of the people uh, in that complex, you know, ask them if they they're happy with how things have, have gone, um, and there's no there's no there's no better way of, of, of finding out, you know, the history of the developer, how reliable they are, um, and particularly in terms of, of coming to a completion. Um, now, the second, and which is probably the most important thing that I can suggest, is that you have to check the contract. You have to check the clause, clauses within that contract. Um, this is where it's really invaluable to have a property law specialist or solicitor um, as part of your team to be able to review uh, what's in the contract. Now, some of the things that you want to look out for, obviously the sunset clause, which as we said is obviously designed to protect the purchaser, um, but as we have seen, it can be invoked um, by the developer as well. So that's something you really want to check. Um, find out what uh, time frame they have put in there and, and see if that seems reasonable to you. That is negotiable as well. It's not set in concrete, that sunset clause. So you may be able to negotiate that if you don't think it's uh, reasonable in terms of the time frame that they have set. 
That's going to vary, I, I think, depending on at what stage you buy into uh, the development. So, um, you know, if, there, if there's no uh, dirt that's been turned as yet, you're obviously looking at, at a longer period. You know, if you're buying into a, a, a near completion or to into a second stage of construction or something like that, then the turnaround time might be shorter and you might look at shortening that sunset clause. So you really do need to consult a specialist. Um, as I said, a, a specialist uh, property law expert is ideal. Instagram, thanks for joining. Um, and have them as part of your team because you want to check uh, not only that, but you want to have a look at uh, some of the other clauses uh, within the contract as well, particularly as they relate to the, the fixtures and fittings. Um, it is a really important one to, to be on top of as well. Things do um, uh, over you know, the, the course of a snakebite 82, thanks for joining, uh, over the course of a build can, can obviously um, uh, not go to plan or supplies can run out, um, lines can be discontinued, all that sort of thing. Um, and, and the developer is entitled to you know, replace um, like for like in terms of the, the quality of the, the fixtures and fittings. So generally speaking, you want to make sure that you check the contract for, for what's stipulated there to see if that seems reasonable to you as well. Um, the other thing as well is the design, so the floor plan and the design. So again, these are large builds and, and you know the, some sometimes um, changes do need to be made and you want to see uh, what scope the developer does have within your contract for those design changes to be made. Now, obviously going from a one bedroom to a studio is not something that, not a situation that you want to allow and, and get into um, and that would be, you know, beyond, beyond the course of a, you know, a normal event, but that was really just to highlight what can happen. So um, in that instance, that young gentleman, you know, has paid his deposit three years prior, expecting to move into a one-bedroom apartment, uh, has been provided with a studio apartment, and now uh, he's not being forced to obviously continue with that contract, but he's lost, um, you know, all that time that he could have uh, invested that money somewhere else or into another purchase or to do something else. So, I mean, it's not a great situation to, to find yourself in. And again, it does go back to doing your due diligence on the developer and, and making sure they've got a stable track record, as you would with anyone that you're going to go in business with, particularly with such a, you know, a large amount of money involved. Okay, now the other really important area I want to talk about is finance, obviously. Um, most off the plan developments you require a 10% deposit uh, with a balance due at settlement, typically 12 to 18 months, could be longer, perhaps 24 months, 36 months, but on average 12, 12 to 18 months. Instagram, welcome back. Um, now, any finance approved at, at this point in time when you're paying your deposit uh, will be conditional, okay? Now that'll be typically one of the clauses in there will be conditional upon the, the valuation. Pallet and Peanut, thanks for joining. Um, now, finance, you won't be able to get your finance, uh, your final finance approved until just prior to settlement. And there is, thanks for the hearts, uh, there's no subject to finance clause that can be put into this contract, okay? So that will be an unconditional contract. So when you're paying your deposit, that, uh, that contract cannot be made uh, subject to finance. Um, so it is an unconditional contract, meaning you do need to complete that contract. Now, when you're looking at paying your 10% deposit uh, now and not settling for, say, 12 or, or 18 months, you need to be confident that you're going to be able to um, uh, obtain finance 18 months down the track. So what you're, you need to think about what your employment situation is going to be, your living situation, all those sorts of things, 12 or 18 months down the track, because that's the point in time when you're actually going to need to get uh, final and unconditional approval for your finance. Um, and if you're unable to do that at that point, then then you're, gonna ha you're going to have an issue, okay? So um, getting a pre-approval at this point in time is, is worthless. It's, it's, there's no, no, no benefit to that whatsoever, um, uh, other than to, to get an understanding perhaps of what you may be able to, to borrow if your circumstances remain the same. But um, all you're doing now is paying your 10% deposit uh, to the developer uh, for them to, to hold and to, to, to do the build for you. Now, upon completion at settlement, 12, 18 months down the track, that's when you need to obtain your finance, your full finance. Let's say it's $500,000 uh, contract, that $490,000, if that's what you require. Um, you, that's what then you will need to uh, you will need to be paying uh, at settlement, okay? So we'll just talk about that a little bit more. So you really need to, to be aware um, of what your circumstances might be 12 to 18 months out. 
and the off-the-plan apartment that you're purchasing, um, if you're purchasing a studio apartment or a one-bedroom apartment and you're planning on having uh, kids with your partner in the next 12 months, 18 months, um, then it comes time to settle. Uh, you, you're probably not going to... The, the one-bedroom apartment it may not be suitable for your needs You know, 18 months down the track. You still need to settle on that, um, on that contract that, that you have agreed to. You also need to be aware of what your financial circumstances will be at that point in time as well. You don't want to be racking up, you know, additional uh, debt or, or, or additional expenses between now and then. And you obviously, um, ideally, don't want to be changing around jobs um, in that sort of, you know, three months prior to when you're uh, due to settle as well, because that can affect, with particular lenders, your ability to get finance. Whaler L33, thanks for joining. Uh, feel free to keep those hearts coming too, you guys. Really appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, the other thing that um, you need to be aware of is, is obviously your circumstances. Now, something that's been in the media, thanks very much, something that's been in the media of recent times is the recent uh, lending changes that um, have, been, have been driven by uh, APRA and, and many of the, the larger lenders have been uh, reducing the LVRs that they will lend uh, on off-the-plan investment purchases and in particular postcodes and, and suburbs and things like that. There's nothing you can do about changes to lending policy. So um, if you, as I said, had a, had a pre-approval uh, for uh, at a 90% LVR um, today and in 18 months' time, that lender will only lend to uh, 80%, meaning you've got to come up with another 10%. There's really nothing nothing you can do about that. And as I said, that, that pre-approval is worth nothing anyway. Like, it, it really is a waste of time, to be perfectly honest, um, other than to give you an indication how much you may be able to borrow if your circumstances stay the same and all the other circumstances stay the same in terms of lending policy and so on and so forth. So... Um, don't get me wrong, there are still lenders out there um, for purchasing off the plan uh, and investment properties that will lend up to 95%. Um, the media would have you believe that uh, you have to come up with a 20% deposit now and no one's going to be able to complete uh, on those uh, purchases. People that have put down a 10% deposit and now have to come up with 20%. That's not necessarily the case. I mean, you do uh, need to consult your, your mortgage broker or your finance expert to find out which lenders that you may be able to go to to still uh, borrow that 95 or, or 90% uh, as opposed to, um, to 80%. Um, but it is still available out there. That's not to say that it still will be in 18 months' time. So it does uh, make a lot of sense to uh, either have at your disposal uh, now 20% deposit or plan to have it at settlement, have that 20% deposit, because that's going to, Ginger1964, thanks for joining, uh, that's going to um, obviously mitigate a lot of that risk, okay? So um, being risk averse, really, if you're able to have that 20% deposit, preferably now, and have that money working for you up until settlement, or plan to have 20% deposit uh, at settlement, that really is going to open up your, your lending options uh, at that time. Okay, the other thing that's going to happen uh, closer to settlement is 14 days prior, uh, the, to prior to settlement, prior to the, the settlement date, the developer's going to issue a 14-day notice to complete, and that'll give you basically 14 days to get your finance uh, finalised and approved, so unconditionally approved. Um, you'll need to get your formal loan approval at that point in time. This is also when the valuation is going to take place as well. So um, if the valuation does come in under the contract price that you've paid, then you're going to need to find the extra funds to complete the purchase, okay? So if you paid $500,000, so the contract price was $500,000 for the you know, one-bedroom apartment that you've purchased in the CBD, you've paid your 10% your deposit, um, your $50,000, and you think you're going to borrow, let's just exclude costs and LMI at this point in time for simplicity, you think you're going to borrow $450,000, okay? So contract price is five hundred. dollars you've paid $50,000 deposit, you want to borrow $450,000, okay, which is a 90% Lend. Lenny Cappy, 425, good to see you. Okay, now if the, that valuation comes in below 500,000, so let's say it comes in at 470,000, for example, um, and you are still borrowing your, your 90% uh, LVR, uh, the bank's only going to, or the lender's only going to lend you 423,000. Okay, so that means that you're going to need to find find, come up with somehow another 27000 Ken Z, g'day, uh, find another $27,000 to complete that purchase, okay? Otherwise, you risk breaching the contract and forfeiting your deposit. Now, the developer can also pursue you for costs as well. So, 
Something we really want to be conscious of, particularly when selecting your, your assets and selecting your purchase, is is the valuation going to stack up? Now, the valuer can't the valuer can't come today and say, yeah, look, I'm, I'm going to forecast into the future what the valuation you know is going to be upon settlement and, and completion. Uh, that's not that's not their job. That's not how it works. That's not how they do things. The valuation primarily is based on comparable sales. Okay, so that'll be around the point in time comparable comparable sales in the recent history of when settlement is due, which you know, as we said before, can be 12 to 18 months down the track. So. How do we mitigate that risk? Okay, so um, what you want to do is typically avoid areas where there's going to be a large number of new developments uh, coming onto the market uh, in that particular area. Okay, so if what that means um, is that there could be an oversupply of stock coming onto the market at that point in time. Okay, now that's going to affect supply, obviously. Um, supply and demand is what affects uh, primarily the price. Okay, so simple economics. If there's an increase in supply, typically price is going to come down. Um, how do you find out? Uh, if there are or what developments there are in an area, speak to the local council. Okay, it's really imperative to find out what other developments are, are planned, uh, have been approved or, or are underway, to give you an indication of how much supply, how much stock is coming onto the market in those areas, okay? Um, because that is definitely going to affect your valuation. Again, where do you find this information? Google. Go Google tells you everything. Um, search on the local council, then go and speak to them, um, call them up, you can go and visit them as well, um, and, they and they'll readily uh, provide that information to you, okay? So it really does come back to the, to the research and, and being prepared. Um, and having uh, awareness, I guess, of, of these things that you need to be aware of in an off-the-plan purchase. Again, house and land package is slightly different again, um, but when you compare it to an existing property, these particular things are really unique to purchasing uh, off-the-plan apartments. Okay, so just in summary, um, obviously we want to make sure we do our, our due diligence on the developer. As I said, get onto Google, search the developer, search the directors as well, see who's involved in the, in the company. Find out as much as you can. If you can, go and visit some of their previous developments and potentially even speak to some of the residents if the opportunity comes up. Uh, and that will give you some, some really good background um, on who you're dealing with and how reliable they are in terms of you know, completing that development to um, you know, what they have specified. The other one is, uh, secondly, we want to check that contract basically with a fine tooth comb, go over it um, with a, a property law specialist. Um, look, there's lots of jargon in there that confuses everybody sometimes, um, and it, you really want to make sure that you, you speak to someone who is an expert in that field, can you know decode what uh, what all those clauses mean, explain it to you in plain English, and you know potentially go back with adjustments that, that you want made to the contract. So you want to be as crystal clear as you possibly can on that contract. As I mentioned earlier, you want to be wary of the, the sunset clause, any changes to, to fixtures and fittings as well as design that, uh, that are allowed within that contract. And if it doesn't sit right with you, then you, know, you need to speak up. Um, don't, feel, don't feel like you, you can't negotiate on that contract. Um, the other thing as well, uh, thirdly uh, and finally, is, is understanding the, the f your, your finance, um, the finance process and also the valuation process as well. So again, really, um, crucial to speak to an, an expert uh, mortgage broker uh, who can give you advice in terms of um, your lending, your, your, your potential uh, capacity to borrow, but also more importantly, the time of settlement. Even leading up, you know, the three months prior is, is really a, a really important time to, to speak to your mortgage broker so they can understand your situation so you know um, where you stand and you know um, uh, whether or not you should be uh, accepting a new job offer or changing jobs or, or doing anything like that. So getting an understanding of what the current lending policies are, speaking to, to your mortgage broker and seeing uh, which lenders will be most suitable for you, particularly when it comes to LVR, having to come up with you know, an extra 10 percent um, uh, an extra 10% of funds to complete the purchase at settlement um, is obviously not ideal if that's not, we, not what you're expecting. So, you know, that could be, you know, an extra $50,000, for example. Um, and it is quite often very difficult to come up with that money uh, straight away. Uh, Cindy RN, thanks for joining. Uh, the other one, of course, as I mentioned, is to speak to the local council, find out what other uh, developments are planned in the area, what it's been approved, what's um, you know, due to, to be completed, and find out um, how much supply of stock there's going to be in your area. As I said, it does affect the, the valuation. 
And uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to, to fire them in. So look, in summary, those, those are the three key areas that I did want to cover. Um, if, look, if you're seriously looking to, to purchase an investment property off the plan or, or even um, something to live in, um, please consult with me and I can connect you with all the appropriate experts um, to ensure you get the best possible outcome in that scenario. And uh, yeah, just wanted to say uh, thanks for all, the, for all the hearts today. Thanks for joining and, and staying through to, to the end of the scope. And uh, we'll hopefully speak to you soon.